Jen Dobry. In this week's edition of Bread in Poland, I take you to Kazimierz Dolny. Now this is a, let's say village, because it's not really big enough to be a city, but it is perhaps one of the most original places I have been to in Poland. It is a kind of a small village with a great deal of history. It dates back to the 12th century, uh, founded by some nuns, and it was kind of turned into an artistic colony, and a lot of that remains. You have a castle here, you have another castle over there, you have another castle over there. I didn't make it to that castle. Um, but it's a beautiful place, surrounded by nature. Uh, it's characteristic for these kind of gorges that have been formed. And it's a place that many, many people in Poland have recommended to me. And it's taken me, what, five years to get here? And I'm so glad that I came. So I hope, look forward to sharing all of the wonder of this city with you, our village. So stay tuned. Dzień dobry, and welcome to A Brit in Poland. This channel is going to bring you everything you need to know about Poland. I am exploring the country, bringing you the history, trying to tell you about the culture and show you what it is really like to live here. So feel free to check out my other media, Instagram, Facebook, and I will share links to those in the comments. I also have a website, www.britinpoland.com, where I collate my videos for easy to view manner. Also, you are welcome to contribute to my efforts through Patronite or Patreon, and all descriptions are available below the video. I hope you enjoyed today's video and please come back for more by subscribing, liking or commenting. Thank you very much. Dalsa Vichenia. Thank you very much to Ricky, Wojciech, Nico, Dominika. Uh, you allowed me to eat food at the end of this month. <laughs> but seriously, you're all helping. So Kazimierz Dolny is in the, uh, let's say, southeast of Poland not too far from Warsaw, so it was quite nice to get there and have a weekend. So I took a uh, bus to get there, I'll be showing you that shortly. And here is a lovely view of, let's say, it's all in a valley. It's very green, definitely a place to visit in the summer. <laughs> Curious what it would be like in winter. Uh, but I took a Halo bus this time because there's no train line here and not having a car, it was kind of the, the only way I could really get there. Um, but it was a pretty uh, fast journey, I think about two hours. And this is the view I got uh, from just arriving. Now this is the, the main town square, which actually I think was built after um, a lot of the, uh, the key buildings that we're going to cover. But it was a very popular place. Um, lots of places to eat, drink, lots of souvenir stands, and home to the Selai Tenement House, which goes back to the 17th century and was built by Bartolome Selai, who was a merchant and is now one of the, uh, the key museums. Though I didn't know it was a museum when I was there. Uh, this is a statue of a homeless dog that used to uh, visit um, the square quite a lot. And first off, we're going to go to the, the Church of St. John the Baptist and St. Bartholomew. So the site for this church is actually where uh, one, it's one of the oldest buildings of this city stands. And so this was built by Casimir the Great uh, back in, the, uh, in about 1325, though it was burnt down and it the version you see now was more rebuilt between 1586 to 1589 and finished up uh, in the sort of 1600s. And it's beautiful, as so many churches uh, in Poland tend to be. So it's a pretty big landmark and you have this kind of churchyard out the back where you get the first view of the castle. And this church art was a little bit tucked away. I kind of just found it by doing a little bit of exploring. Uh, there was a little exhibit at the top showing the old world. Now the castle 
um, also attributed to Casimir the Great, um, is said to have been built in about 1399, and he built it for his beloved Esterka. In 1560, it was made into a robber's nest by Katarzyna Zabonska, and from there she would use it as a base of operations to rob the local residents, and she would hide her loot in the castle and the nearby cave. She was eventually brought to justice and killed in a rather brutal manner, and it is said her ghost still haunts the grounds. Uh, the castle was owned by the Samborski family for about a hundred years after, uh, but they suddenly left the residence and no one has lived there since. It is said that they were driven away by the ghost and nobody is safe there, even to this day. If you have any further details on the ghost story or if you've had any contact with the ghost, please comment below. I'm always interested in these stories. I'm wondering if this is the cave where the treasure was hidden, kind of underneath the castle. It's another one of those places where it's prominent everywhere you are in the city, gives you some wonderful views of the valley. And here you have the Vista La River, which we're going to come back to in a little while, but it just adds to the beauty. So next we're going to go to the second tower, and there's another kind of story associated with this one. So Maciek uh, Borkovitz, who was a trusted friend of Casimir, uh, was given funds to build the new tower. Uh, but he embezzled this, and he actually went on to commit many crimes, including robbery, rape, assault, and other horrible things. Eventually, he took things too far and harassed Esterka, Casimir's lover. And then the king locked him in the tower, and after being persuaded by the townspeople, left him to starve to death. So, <laughs> some lovely, lovely medieval stories. But then every castle has to have at least one person who's been killed in some horrible manner. So next we're going to take a bit of a trek uh, up the hill. Yeah, there's lots of going up and down hills in Kazimierz Dolny. And we're going to go uh, to the Hill of Free Crosses. And this place is said to be established in uh, 1577 uh, as a plate of cult activity, in theory. And they actually found some human bones in a burial. Uh, my God, I can't speak. In a burial mound here. Though locally they prefer to think it commemorates the plague of the 18th century. And this is probably the best place uh, to get a decent view of the city. Though it does take a bit of a trek to get there. So we are next going to go to the monastery, which is another impressive religious building, the yes, Church of the Annunciation of the v Blessed Virgin Mary. All of these are a mouthful. Um, and it was uh, built in 1589 as that church and became a monastery, a Franciscan monastery uh, between 1638 and 1668. Uh, the complex is surrounded by a wall from the first half of the 18th century. As well as being a beautiful building with some nice statues and gardens and of course immaculate interior design, it offers another vantage point of the city. So I've covered, let's say, the three main vantage points where you can get a nice panoramic view. So you Instagrammers hopefully are going to be made happy by this video so far. And it's a lovely place to take shots of. Uh, we're next going to the Church of St. Anna, which was built in 1671, and it became uh, a hospital, um, a spirit for the poor with the Mannerist gable from 1635. It wasn't the easiest place to get a shot of because it's in a quite a built-up area, but again, lots of religion going on, <laughs> a lot of uh, Polish history. And this is um, a Jewish synagogue. It's now a shop. Uh, they do sometimes have an exhibit inside. Sadly, they wouldn't let me take any video inside the building. And here we get to the river. And 
I could just imagine this is a good place to go and drink in the evenings because uh, I'll be honest, there are not really many bars in this city. And I was there on a Saturday night and even then the only bar I found was open to 11 o'clock. So it's not really a place to go drinking, but never mind. And here you have some of your lovely bars along the river. Now we're going to go to the, let's say, natural side of the uh, the city for a while. And we're going to start by going through a graveyard. Uh, this was actually one of the uh, kind of tourist routes, which leads to one of the first gorges, uh, which I was able to visit. And I do recommend taking some good shoes for this trip because there are a lot of gorges to discover and they are gorgeous. <laughs> no pun intended. So as soon as you kind of get out, you have you realize the place is surrounded by these beautiful fields. So it is a wonderful place to escape. And these gorges are really cool. You know, they're, they're not something that you see in a lot of places in the world. They are formed uh, by the flow of water uh, through dusty yellowish loess rocks. And were actually formed between 100,000 to 15,000 years ago. And we're going to uh, take a little bit of a walk through them. I found that they were a little bit heavier mosquitoes, so I may have got bitten a few times, which was, let's say, less than ideal. Um, but they were very scenic and very quiet as well, so it was, it was a nice place to relax. And I actually saw them doing a spot of filming here. And it makes me wonder why there isn't more... You know, why is Hollywood not using Poland? Because there are so many amazing places in this country to use for film sets. All you really see um, uh, local Polish filmmakers making films about World War II. But anyway, uh, so we are heading back into the city. And now we are going to take, let's say, the, the tourist gorge route. So we have a bit of a trek. And I'm just showing you some of the, the, the beautiful buildings, uh, the lovely kind of sights of nature. You can see a, a kind of random farmland uh, distributed here. Some lovely trees around a house. Reminds me a bit of my, uh, my uncle's place in Kent. And lovely flowers. I really went at the right time of year. But this is the Root Scourge and it is the let's say the the one where pretty much all of the tourists flock to there are buses that take people there there are horse-drawn carriages that take people there if you do not want to walk if you do want to walk it will take you i don't know about an hour or so from the center it's not really that far but it's quite dramatic looking you can really see the yellow here and like the color combined with you know the kind of green above it feels a little bit otherworldly and here you have like the the exposed roots that are kind of cutting into the gorge here so it it, it does feel like you're on an alien planet um one thing i will say while you're admiring this is all of these like really cool tourist attractions do cost money um it's not normally a lot of money uh, sort of three or five's lossy, but I would advise keeping change with you. Uh, the thing with Kazimierz Dolny is it is a, a, a touristic site. So really um, expect to spend a bit of money here. They will try and, you know, just squeeze a little bit from you here and there. But it's worth it, I guarantee it. And yes, I was just uh, traveling back trying to find this other so i was going through this other gorge thinking ah oh, cool okay nice little shortcut and then i kind of got to the end and it was like ah okay i could sl slide down there but i'm kind of will it lead somewhere so here we have a bit of a legend this is the the cogurt and this you can buy this bread roll in a lot of places and it comes from the myth uh, that the devil made his home in Kazimierz, and he took a fancy to eating local roosters. And he ate 
every rooster in the city apart from one who managed to hide. And the local nuns, they rushed to help and purified the devil's hideout, and the smell of the holy water drove him away. <sighs> Sorry, I need to work on the timing. Okay, so the next section of the video, we're going to talk about the art history of Kashmir. So you have countless galleries, um, pretty much all of the, most of the museums are to do with art, whether it be silverware, whether it be kind of monuments, statues. Uh, this is a, a place I went to that was selling all of these figurines. I may have picked up a, uh, an angel for myself, despite not being too religious. Um, but yes, you have gallery after gallery after gallery. And this is uh, enough one of the, uh, the museums that you can go to. And again, it's full of uh, a lot of kind of classical as well as modern art. And this place, it, it's flocked to um, by artists. And I can, you can see why it's so beautiful. Uh, it's like the idyllic place in nature. Here was like an exhibit uh, about the war in Ukraine, kind of standing up for Ukrainians. So always good to see. And everywhere you looked, there were galleries or arts available. And we're going to take a little bit of a trek to, let's say, the last artistic place, which is the Kuncivit family house. And this was actually made in 1936, and it belonged to the writer Maria Kuncivitskova and her husband, uh, Jerzy. And he was a lawyer, writer and a politician. They actually fled uh, during World War II as, and emigrated abroad, as many people did during those times and uh, they lived in the States for a while with their son, they would return in the 60s and then reclaim uh, the kind of the manor as their summer house. And here are some just some other lovely sights of the city. There are a whole load of granaries. I mean, this place was a major grain producer back in the day. And this granary is actually home of the kind of natural history museum. So you have some modern art. Uh, you can learn about the, the local wildlife. Uh, it tells you about the kind of the history of the geology of the area, which is very interesting. So it really is uh, another one of these must-see places and a cool little digital display to go with it. But yes, um, I will get to the history of the city, I'm sure of it at some point. Look at the bees. Uh, but let's just say it was settled in the 11th century, and it was originally a settlement called uh, Vietna Gura, uh, which belonged to the Benedictine order. And the name of the settlement was changed to Kajimish in 1249 by the Norbertines, uh, with Dolny being added to the name a few years later. And the settlement would eventually become the property of the crown around 1325. And that's where Casimir founded the church. It actually get, got city rights in 1406. Granaries and markets were established. And it was rebuilt in the fire in 1561 and 1585. We're going to take a slight extra trip now. And this is to Yanovitz. But let me finish the history and then I'll tell you a bit more. So the town was burned down by the Swedes in 1656, ending the kind of golden age. And the Battle of Kazimir Dolny took place during the November Uprising in 1831. 1940, the Germans created a ghetto for the Jewish population. The city was kind of occupied by Germany during the war. And eventually it was rebuilt after the war. Now, on our way to Janowitz, which is a, a small village across the river, I encountered this place, which I didn't know about, and it's like the Million Rose Garden, and it's beautiful. It has all of these, like, dioramas of castles. And you would think, oh, okay, so castles from over Poland. Sort of. They're castles that are actually now currently in Ukraine, which were historically Polish, which... Um, is something I hadn't seen before. And it's the scale of these castles is very impressive. And it, it, yeah, I've not seen anything quite like these castles in Poland yet, though I believe there are a number of places in Lower Silesia. 
So just beyond this place uh, is the ferry uh, to get across the water. So here you can see it's just a small ferry and it pretty much just goes back and forth. In fact, it has like a chain which it's kind of being dragged uh, along with. And you get this nice little view of the Vistula. I think it was about 12 Zloty each way, which, you know, is pretty reasonable. Um, the girl who was running the ferry spoke English. And here we are, uh, entering Yanovitz. And as I say, this is a very small city when you get to it. It's about a thousand people. Uh, sorry, this one definitely is a village. Um, <laughs> here was a, a Jewish cemetery, which didn't seem to have any uh, gravestones, maybe destroyed by the Nazis. And here we are in the village proper. Looks like a very tranquil, very kind of idyllic place. As you'd expect for a thousand people, it wasn't really the biggest of places. You know, this is the basically the town centre, which is, you know, very picturesque. There was a nice looking bar, which I wish I'd gone to, but just didn't have the time. And of course, it has a grand church right in the middle. However, the uh, the reason people will generally come to this village is because of the castle at the top. So again, it's a bit of a hike to get there. It'll maybe take you an hour or two each way. Um, but it's worth it. It's quite an impressive castle when you get up there. It's uh, actually a bastion castle from the beginning of the 16th century. And it was the seat of the magnate families Ferle, Tawo, and Lubomirsky. But it's been abandoned since the 19th century, and it's only been kind of partially reconstructed. It's now owned by, you know, the states, basically. And you have a bit of a museum underneath it as well. But it's, it's a pretty cool place to just explore. Uh, you know, very picturesque. Um, it uh, has these, these lovely kind of gardens next to it and a manor house, uh, which you can sort of at least visit the outside of. I kind of made a mistake after visiting this castle <laughs> and took a turning, which I thought was going to turn back around um, and ended up taking me away. And then uh, there was some local police saying I couldn't turn back or something like that. Uh, I, I tried my best to understand in Polish. It was um, a very interesting conversation and I learned that their son lives in London. Um, so quite random, but this whole area, uh, is absolutely beautiful. So this was the path I took away from the castle where I got, let's say a little bit sidetracked. And then I had this amazing viewpoint, uh, at the end of it. And what you can see here, and I'm zooming in now, is you can see Kazimierz Stolny and the castle there. And luckily by this viewpoint, well, luckily for me, especially in this very, very hot weather, I think it was probably about 30 degrees Celsius this weekend, I was stifling, was this random little bar. And uh, only in Poland would you have a bar like this in the middle of nowhere, uh, selling, you know, bottles of beer as well as, uh, you know, local produce. And there were a lot of hiking, hikers kind of going back and forth, so I think it was doing quite well. And this is me taking the path back. Uh, down to the ferry. So, yeah, and also me contemplating, could I take one of these boats and get across the river that way? I think people might have been upset. Uh, this was the bar I discovered. Very nice place. It's kind of more of a vegetarian cuisine in there, but it was uh, very tasty and they served some nice craft beer. Nice view of the castle lit up at night. And this was uh, one restaurant I went to, Stary Dom. Uh, they are kind of famous because they have a very large Nalevka menu. And they served a very, very spicy burger, which was very tasty. But I hope you enjoyed this little tour of uh, Kazim Kazimierz Dolny. It's a beautiful place. Um, I'd recommend go there for a couple of days to get the most of it. Be prepared for some hiking. Be prepared to be a tourist for a few days. But if you love art, if you love nature, if you love architecture, if you love anything, this is the place to be. Doza Stay tuned for more.